Zor. So right here we have like one, two, three, four, five, six, six amazing plates, stuffed cabbage. There's okra. Oh my God. Welcome to Berat, Albania. Known as the city of a thousand windows, Berat is a UNESCO World Heritage Site that boasts a rich history and stunning architecture. In this documentary, we're exploring this historical city, from the gorgeous Ottoman-era houses overlooking the Osum River, to the picturesque views of the city from the medieval Berat Castle, creating a picturesque scene that will leave you in awe. I'm taking you into this city's historical neighborhoods as we wander the cobblestone streets of its old town and visit traditional shops. And get ready for your mouth to water because we're also getting a taste of the local cuisine with drool-inducing Albanian feasts inside Berat Castle, Alpeta Winery, and Castle Park Hotel. Then, we're taking a road trip to the beautiful lakeside resort city of Pogrodets, where we'll try some of the area's mouth-watering freshwater fish and take in its natural beauty. It's going to be a fun ride, so buckle up and join me as we explore the wonders of Berat, Albania. Let's go! Good afternoon everyone, this is David Hoffman from David's Bin here coming at you from beautiful Berat, an incredible Ottoman UNESCO World Heritage Town in southern Albania. It's located about a two and a half hour drive from Tirana and it is gorgeous. Right now I'm on the 17th century bridge, stone bridge. Over here we have half of the town, so this half and this half and up there we have the castle. So this place is known for having a thousand windows, as you can see, incredible really beautiful. The Ottomans came here around the 15th century and that's when this town was founded. Obviously it's had a lot of renovation, beautiful stone building, lots of windows. Let's go explore with my boy. Yeah, let's go. What are we going to see? What are we going to do? So we are going to see, the, to check from close the architecture of Ottomans. So when they built the houses, so you see, they built uh, a very, very interesting architecture. So it's the first floor in stone and second floor in wood. That creates a natural air condition. So it was during the, the winter was warm, during the summer it was cool. So let's go and check. So we have some uh, details about the Gorica Bridge. So first it was mentioned by, by Avrila uh, Celebi, which was a famous uh, traveler from uh, Turkey. So he came here and he first mentioned the bridge of Gorica in 17th century. But this, uh, we have uh, documents that this bridge ended in 18th century. Wow, this is like stepping back in time right here. Exactly. Bro, oh, it's like going to the 18th century. Wow, look at this. Stones. Some of these houses are abandoned, obviously. Some are still people living in it. This one's like in rubbles. The houses were, the roads, the streets were built to have for donkeys because they never imagined that they would have cars one day. So the donkeys come here with uh, to transport things and that's why the, the narrow of the roads are perfect. So it's an uphill walk, right? And here, the area changed completely. There's like a beautiful guest house on the outside called Guest House Hostel Lorek. Gorgeous, I love it. It feels like really Mediterranean feel, you know? Like Mediterranean mixed with Ottoman. It also reminds me of Chum Chumakale. Chumakale is like an Ottoman town outside of Bursa, Turkey. Very similar, obviously. Ottomans, that was the Ottomans, I think, first capital, right? Bursa. And this is just a prime example of Ottoman architecture in Albania, 15th century. These are typical uh, traditional houses. In the past Albanians, they live all together. So they were brothers and uh, cousins, they're living in all in one building. So you have here a few entrances and every entrance has a family. Uh, now they have renovated, but because you are in UNESCO, they have to renovate in the same style in wood, uh, the, the gates, main gates. This is an old one, it looks like a uh, Hobbit houses. <laughs> not in fact uh, the typical uh, architecture, but they make it not very, very uh, large because when you enter the house, you have to bow down to the family. So you can see I'm not very tall, but you can see I can, my head is on it. So you have to bow. So when you go inside, you have to, to bow. Okay, cool. Yeah, I mean, this is beautiful. So this obviously has all been renovated. The plaster, but over here you see some of the stones, right? On this side of the building. So this side, all original stone. Over here it's a little different because they've renovated, you know, many centuries. These stones don't last forever. You have to keep fixing up the houses. And right here we have one, two, three, four, five, five different houses in one block. And right here we have a really, really old door. It's like literally falling apart. Come here, come here, let me show you. 
So here. <laughs> oh, this is actually somebody's house, but the door is like falling apart. <laughs> Sorry. And then here, it's a lock, right? So she locks it at night. Really nice. Let's keep going. Well, David, yeah, look at this church. So we have here a 19th century church, which actually is closed. But uh, in this area, we have a lot of churches from 17th to 19th century. I've been uh, maybe 50 times, but uh, we go usually on the castle and, and uh, Mangalemi. This is not very uh, popular area, but anyhow, since we are together, we'll uh, like see everything. This is the one that's less touristic, this side. The other side, under the castle, has way more tourists, probably more restaurants, exactly. more of everything, guest houses, etc. But this is still very beautiful, authentic, less touristic. I mean, we're here, we have time, let's explore it. But it's more uh, real architecture uh, connecting with the past than that side. And right across the river, we have the other neighborhood. What's the name of the neighborhood? Mangalemi. Mangalemi, Mangalemi. Yeah, this side is super local. Over there, you already see it. See a few hotels, restaurants. I mean, it's really pretty though. Exactly. Like, it's really, really pretty. This whole area is gorgeous. And what I love about this area, is there's so many things in terms of agriculture, wine, rakia. Rakia. Here we have a steel bridge. Yeah. This connects the towns closer on this side because they're closer here. Yeah. Over there where the other bridge is, they're a little farther. So it would take them a lot longer to go around. This one's bigger, it connects them easier, and it was just built recently, right? Exactly. Past exactly. 100 years for sure. Less than 100 years, about 50 years. Okay. Because these are the two main neighborhoods and people can connect easier there, yeah, as you said, than okay. the Gorica Bridge. And in front of us we have a minaret. Yeah. We have the town, and at the top, the castle. From the castle you get that epic view. Yeah. Wow. We're going to that panorama view. Yeah. Look at that. So now we are going to Mangalemi neighborhood and uh, in this side we can see more Muslim uh, religion objects like this mosque. This was bachelor mosque. So unfortunately the mosque isn't open. It's under construction. Really beautiful though. You can see really old painting on top. You have you know some Arabic scripture right there. And this is all stone, right? Really old? How old? It's uh, from 16th century. Mosque. 16th century? Yeah. This was interesting because when uh, the young people, they want to find a wife, they come here to have the imam and that's why it's called bachelor mosque so for, for single people, <laughs> for oh, things, wow. single guys. So along the street we have tons of restaurants, souvenir shops, little supermarkets, I mean a variety of different shops. Obviously this is where everybody walks around, right? But right here we have Tassari, here we have some unique art, handmade art, over there we have a hotel. Plus we have restaurant and we just never ending uh, commercial space. This looks awesome. Can we see in this? As you can see here to the left, they have wood carvings of the city. You have different buildings, churches, castles. This is my favorite. This one's like the view from the other side. And her brother is actually the guy who's carving the wood right back here. Look, this is the type of souvenirs you need to buy when you come to Albania, when you go anywhere around the world. Stuff that is handmade local and this is really unique. Like I would buy one of these and put it on my wall. I love it. How much is it? 33 euro? Wow, it's a great deal. 33 euro? Okay. Let me see, do I like any of them? You guys know I collect like masks. I have a wall, a beautiful wall that I'm building with all my travels. You know, like one souvenir from all my travels. And I walked in here and I was like, I'm not gonna find a mask in Albania, but I want a good wood carving. And I decided on this one. It cost me like 65 euros, but this is the trip. This is like the gift from the trip for my family. So it's olive tree and it weighs a lot. Yeah. But you know it's what? About, it's about five kilograms. This, this is like Albania right here. Exactly. Yeah. All right, let's go. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So now you know if you want to buy the same thing, come to Unique Art right here on this side of the river. Now we're making our way up the town. And as you can see, beautiful hotels right here, very traditional Ottoman style buildings. I love it because it's like stone on the bottom and then it, like, it goes like out. It becomes like, oh, you know. So what do we have over here? You said we're going to an ethnographic museum? Exactly. Ethnographic museum. Uh, an old house, which we'll see how it was Albania house furnished in the past centuries. Very, very pretty town. Super pretty. Super authentic town. As you walk up here, you see this is like a steep stairway. It goes down and goes through the back alleys of the town. Very, very narrow paths, all full of grass. You have houses. Here is more houses. Up here we have the museum, over here are some hotels, 
Let's go inside the museum. This ethnographic museum dates back over 400 years. It's a traditional old house and it's still perfectly intact the way they used to use it. So you have many different rooms. In each room you have different things. So some rooms you have some clothing where it shows you how people used to dress in Berat, right? You have uh, you know, headpieces, uh, wool, uh, different pans, pottery. I mean, just a bunch of different things. You know, same, same things you have in your house today, but just old style. Yeah. What I love is the floor, how they have it. And my favorite part of the entire house was the guest room. The guest room okay. was awesome because it's yeah. really, really like big. Like you could lay down on that couch and then they have like windows on top and that's where the girls would stay that yeah. if they weren't the same family exactly you know? so a really cool experience you should definitely come here it's one of the things you have to see when you come to beta just walk through see every single room i think there's like seven or eight different rooms they'll give you a tour of the property and the cost is i think it was 300 lakh per person something like that yeah around two and a half euro so that was the perception of a villa in uh, 16th to 18th century so this was a house for rich families so you can see how beautiful a lot of rooms like today in a beautiful villa we have our, a lot of rooms so that was it. So now we're going up to the top to the castle of Berat and there we're gonna get epic views we're gonna see everything you can see inside and we're gonna have lunch at the restaurant. Is it one restaurant up there? Many restaurants? Many restaurants but they're going to the best one. The best one and which one is that one? The local family there they cook together so it's called Cocho Placo. So he's a very funny man and his wife cooked very well. So you can walk up there if you want to, but we're driving because it's way too hot. And this is the castle of Berat. It dates back over 2,400 years. Well, obviously it was back in Illyrian times and then it got renovated many, many more times as people came in, conquered, you know, they left, etc. So we are now going to enter inside the castle. So this is a map of the seat of the castle of Berat. So it's very easy to explain. So we are now here entering inside the castle. You can see all these buildings are different churches. So we used to have here 20 churches, but now we can see only 12 remains. Uh, old, but still very beautiful inside. So we will enter here and do a tour all around. And the best view is from the balcony, which is so from down downtown. It's very easy to understand the, the timing uh, in the past. So the big stones are from Illyrian time, which means the city is older than 2000 years ago. So 2400 years ago, then Romans arrived here. You can see the red bricks. So the Romans were the first using the red bricks and uh, the, the cement, uh, cement to attach the, just the wall. Then when Ottomans arrived, Ottomans preferred to have white and small stones to build. So you can see three periods of time in this wall. One thing that's very unique about this castle is that it's a living castle, meaning people actually still live here. The lady I met at the museum was born in here. Still houses. Over there is like a mini garage. Literally their cars are parked next to the gate. Awesome. So stones, stone walls, another house right here, right? Yeah. So cool, so cool. And you have souvenir shops, restaurants. Obviously, they have to make a living here, so they started bringing commercial space, right? And there's tons of souvenirs, lots of wood carvings. Obviously, I suggest going to my place where I went and uh, buying there, but. You can find everywhere. This is great. And this is a, ch this is a church? So, we have been under Ottomans for four centuries, and during 16th, 17th centuries, it was forbidden to have a church in an Ottoman town. So, uh, Ottomans left people to build churches but they said it has to look like a house for example like this one you cannot notice that that's a church but in fact it is a church inside but from outside there is not a cross there is not uh, nothing outside so people can go and pray the ones who were Catholics and uh, it was not uh, very very forbidden for Catholic people here going to build a restaurant so he's the owner Kocho Kocho Constantin Kocho Plago Constantin Cocho Plago. Okay. <laughs> Where's the rakia? Uh, <laughs> I love this. So the restaurant's called Unifri, which is a famous, famous painter on Unifri. Okay. Which was, uh, we'll see some of, of his art in the museum. We go later on Unifri Museum. We're sitting outside on the terrace, but they also have indoor seating, looking out over the castle. This feels like a taverna, right? Traditional house. Eh, gazur. Gazur. Ching ching. 
All right, guys. So. Aqua, aqua, aqua. 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 aqua eh? He's saying it's like Very water. Good. Raki. Raki aqua. <laughs> <laughs> so right here we have like one, two, three, four, five, six, six amazing plates, stuffed cabbage. And there's okra. Here we have delicious like pepper, red pepper, green pepper with oil and, and feta cheese. Here we have some beans, and he says like three more plates. So we have like like ten plates, nine plates, ten yeah. plates. All right, we have a straight up feast, local beta food. We have a mixed salad here, peppers with cheese, oil, okra. Over here we have stuffed cabbage, looks amazing. Eggplant, cannolis, which are from here, so very different. We have some boric. Here we have some, I think this is like another burek, or what is this? Vosaka, okay, vosaka. Over here we have a salad, a traditional salad. Feta cheese, tomatoes, and cucumbers, onions as well. Over here we have chicken with rice, and then this is beans, my favorite. Questo lo, lo migliore di tutto. All right, so first thing we're trying is delicious beans, look at this. So it's beans, it has a little bit of herbs on top. Let's try it. Mmm, a little crunchy, moist. I love the herbs. I say, I guess it's thyme, right? Thyme? I think I should try the eggplant because I love eggplant. This is my favorite thing ever. Eggplant, so good. Mmm, so fresh, so juicy. Mm. All right, so next thing we're trying is the delicious okra. So this okra has thyme as well and it has tomato sauce and oil. Okay, okay. Mm. I love okra. It's a delicious festival. Later. Okay. Hang it fresher. I'm not gonna try this. The best. Burak. Look at this monster right here. Mm. <laughs> no good. No good. No, it's amazing. What are you talking about? Mm -hmm. So many layers. Nice cheese. Nice crumbly cheese. I love burek. Burek every day. The best time to eat this, early morning with some rakia. Yeah. Next I'm gonna get the stuffed cabbage. So it's stuffed with rice. And it looks like tomatoes. I love this. You know, my wife is half Greek. I eat this at least once a week. Mm-hmm. Mm. Oh. This is so good. Wow. The stuffed cabbage and the stuffed grape leaves are the best. They're fresh, they're filling. Delicious. My friend here is non-stop. Look at this. Hey, Gazur, Gazur. 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 Ooh. <laughs> Too much. Alright, I think I gotta try this. Alright, so this one has meat inside. It's with meat and it actually looks like a flaky dough, almost like the burrick dough, right? Oh, I like this. So it's not so much meat, it's a little bit of meat. Mm. So it has minced meat, tomatoes, and cheese on top. Mm. Bravo, bravo, bravo. Questo molto buono. Moussaka. Moussaka. This is basically lasagna, Albanian style. All right, let's cut this. Okay. So moussaka, almost like lasagna. So here we have some meat. We also have, I guess this is like a, what is it, potatoes? Colombo. An eggplant, wow. Mm -hmm. What a different moussaka. <laughs> yeah, you have the veggies, the potatoes. Yeah, yeah, and the bottom, I like the crispiness. Mmm. No good. No, it's, it's so good. I'm gonna eat more. Mmm. Combo, combo, okra. Okra. I had okra, so I'm gonna jump on this one. Okay, and here we have the Fergus. So it's red pepper, green pepper, and then like basically feta cheese, basically, right? And onions. And this is incredible. The best oily pepper salad <laughs> of all time. Every dish has been amazing. Oh, I, I had, but I'll have more, my friend. Meljan, Eshplan. Eshplan. Brinjo, Brinjo. Hindi, Hindi. Hindi, Eshplan. So I'm gonna get chicken. You were telling me because it's a little hard to cut, it's from the village. Restaurant, it's Mm-hmm. 
It's top, right? Love the rice. It's really, really good. I have to try the salad. We should have been the first thing. <laughs> hilarious, hilarious, right? I personally love the tomatoes. Cucumbers, I guess skip them. Mm. This is basically Greek salad without the olives. The food's so good, my friends. So good. I gotta say that this eggplant is blowing me away. Mm. You both near them. Cheers. Gazur, gazur. Gazur. This food is phenomenal, my friend. Yeah. Wow. So good. Thank you. Like, I can eat this every day, but maybe one or two plates. Not, not every day, all this. <laughs> manja, manja. Mm. You are right. That's the best. All right, guys. I gotta eat something else. A little more. Some okra. Mm. This is for guests. Yeah. Mm. For boss. Gazor, gazor. Gazor. One more time. One more time. One more time. Gazor. Some good rocky. He made it at home, right? Yeah. It's a strong one. <laughs> My friend. Ow! This guy's violent. It's the rakia. It gives no, you wings. No, no, no. <laughs> I'll see you guys later. Thank you. So next is the Onufri Museum, a famous uh, painter. Onufri was very famous during 17th century. So he's uh, the one who used a very, very a unique red color in his uh, icons. This was a church which was built in 18th century but then later converted into a museum for icons of Onofre. So this area outside of church is one of the best we have here in the Berat. So these are preserved frescoes from 1797. Courtyard frescoes, that's all we can film. We're not allowed to film inside. We should definitely come here when you visit the castle. Now let's go see the viewpoint of Berat. Let's go. And here we made it to the walls. You can see, you can easily fall. <laughs> Don't fall, Don't even come over here. Stay over there. I came over here to get some photos. Because from here you get beautiful views of the city. There we have a church, there we have the hills. A lot of vines, a lot of vineyards in this area. Beautiful mountains. But we're gonna keep walking along the walls and we're going to the viewpoint. It's a big circle, right? And it's called the Tabja. Tabja? Tabja is the tower. Oh, the tower? Yeah. Okay. The defense tower, watching tower, so it was to check the enemies when they're coming. And this is the watchtower. Wow, so it was it higher? It was taller? No, it was like this all the time, so, but here you can have the best view of the thousand windows. So from here you can notice the thousand windows. Come to the castle, walk to the tower, and see this view. No better view in Berat. Wow. Old town right there, both bridges. The river, new town over here, stunning. Incredible, dude. Hey, I love this. This has been one of my favorite spots so far in Albania, Berat, Berat, UNESCO World Heritage Town, 15th century Ottoman village or town, right? Yeah. So 18th century bridge, old town, explore the old town, buy some souvenirs, eat some delicious food at the restaurant. Exactly, on oh. free restaurant, Kocho, the owner. Onufri. 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 Yeah. Delicious food. I don't know what my favorite thing was. The Fergus, the Burek, the Rakia. I mean, it was yes. non-stop food. <laughs> I mean, the food was so, so too good. Much, much and it all comes from the area. Yeah, exactly. Right? From farms. All from the farms of the, of the area. Perfect. Yeah. And then after that, you can explore the castle, see more churches, museums, see old buildings, and then come here and get this view, which is stunning. 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 Like, dude, breathtaking. And guys, I hope you love this video. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. Leave me a comment below, subscribe to my channel for more awesome travel content. I'll see you in the next travel food adventure in Berat. Berat. Let's go. Good afternoon everyone, this is David Hoffman from David's Bin here, coming at you from beautiful, sunny Roshnik, Albania, a small village located around 25 minute drive from Berat. If you guys don't know, Berat is a medieval Ottoman village, UNESCO World Heritage Site, and this whole area right here is 
famous for wines. There's lots of different wineries here. And this one is called Alpeta. So Alpeta's right here. We're gonna go inside, we're gonna try some wines, we're gonna see the vineyard, and then after this, we're going back to Berat, and we're going to my hotel to have dinner, the Castle Hotel, right? This is one of the best uh, wineries we have here, but not the only one, so you can see, except the wineries, the olive trees around the hills, so this area is amazing to live and to taste some good wine and olive oil. My name is Daniel. Daniel, Daniel. show me the bathroom. The nephew of the owner? Yeah. Okay, the nephew of the owner, great. Yeah, so this is the property right here, and right inside, we have a bathroom, the most unique bathroom of all time. What? A bathroom in a barrel. Can I have it? <laughs> of course. <laughs> all right, guys, let's go try some wines and experience the winery. Let's do it. So as we walk around the property, the whole thing is basically a terrace. Over here, you can sit, relax in the vines, come to the very end, see the hills, more vines, and then you have a terrace on the top. Cool, let's go up there. Relax here, some wine, some rocky. For degustation. Degustation? Okay. When tourists come here, degustation for rocky and some wine. Perfect. How many wines? We have three types of wine. Three? Three. Two, two red wines and one white wine. Petri! Yeah. Let's rock and roll. <laughs> Petri is the owner. He's going to take us around the vineyard. We're going to see some grapes, some vines, and then after that, we're going to go inside, see how they make rakia, and then we're going to do a discussion or a tasting, you know, all the wines. Three wines and 20 rakias. <laughs> 20 rakia. So they make rakia out of this fruit. It's called sana. We don't know the translation, so it's sana. It's like a small berry with a nice nut in the middle, nice seed. Sana. <laughs> So this is the flower they use to make ouzo in Greece, it's called anis. I was like, what does it smell like? But it doesn't yeah, smell like a flower, it smells like, it smells like a drink. Yeah, like a drink. Familiar. Same thing in uh, in Turkey, raki. Raki. But you mix it with water. Yeah, raki. Same thing. Uzo raki. So this is one of the Alpeta wineries in model of grapes. So it's very traditional in Albania, this kind of, of grapes. It doesn't have a lot of, uh, of grapes, so it's less grapes, but the quality is better. This is a winter grape. It's ready in January. Basically, when all the leaves fall, that's when you start harvest. Cool. And they have that wine for us to try? They use it for raki. Oh, for raki. Yeah. When they produce raki, they produce it in a specific kind of grapes. They don't use anything for raki. So this grape is for raki, this grape is for wine, and that's it. So these are fig trees, right? So this is a fig tree. So we can taste the fig trees. And uh, he was telling me uh, that he built a hiking trail to the lake so people who come to visit this winery can also have a hiking trip to the lake Bova Lake. You're supposed to open it right but I'm just gonna go in. The best. Mm. Mm. <laughs> Tasty. Tasty filling. You eat five of these you're full. It's out of town from Roshnik and the address is in Beran. Mm-hmm. Mm. Same tasty or different? Super tasty. <laughs> Tomori Mountain is the third largest in Albania with 2714 meters above sea level. And uh, practically it's, uh, we use it for hiking trails during the summertime because winter is full of snow. All the trees right here? Yeah. How many? Uh, so a lot? So Looks like a lot. The uh, new olive trees but they have around 300. This is young olive trees but the old ones basically we don't have here but they are uh, in the mountains most of them this is like they open the, the land they work on it and they plant it but i want to tell you something about the lake so as you can see it's not a natural lake it's artificial lakes in albania uh, during the communist time and Verhoja was very very uh, he liked a lot to build a lot of lakes all around the territory to give to have water for the plants so he did a great job you can see how beautiful it looks there and how safe it is before we go inside and see how they make some rakia and try their wines i gotta try a grape i love doing this you know this is when you know if it's almost ready yet mm -hmm. not so sour nice and sweet harvest is in one month mm. 
delicious. Let's go. So this winery dates to 1992 and first they plant grapes in 1992, then they opened the winery in 1994. So now every year they have developed this place uh, building something. So and the last year they have built a guest house. So in this winery you can have everything tasting winery, have hiking trails, tours and sleep here. So nowadays they are very successful uh, business about this kind of, of the winery in Albania. So now we are trying a very special gra uh, wine which is called the Grape of Pulas, which is a grape that is grown through under the trees and it goes all the way up to the trees. But they have, uh, they have planted in many places now so they are with, uh, they have studied more about this kind of grape, which make the white wine very special. Okay, let's try it. Mm. It's nice, it's dry, it's a little fruity. Gazor, 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 gazor. It's very good, it's not too sweet, just right. Mm -hmm. The other wine is a red one which is called Merlot Cabernet and is a production of 2017. This is uh, the only red one they have reserved in the bottle because uh, of the kind of grapes. The other grapes they use it for uh, house wine. Reserve. Mm, Merlot and Cab. Fantastic. So good. Full body wine. Mm. I'll take a little more of that one. Now is a raki, traditional raki, is a raki from grape, 45% uh, percent alcohol. Now we can taste it. <laughs> <laughs> Let's try this amazing raki, rakia. Oh, it's smooth. It's, it, it's strong, but it's smooth. Like it doesn't hit you right away. You can feel the grapes. Mm. I like the, the glass too, the glass is cool. No? <laughs> this is the raki we saw earlier from the little berry, so it's so tasty, I think. Mm, very good. You drink it like this. This is how you usually have it on them, yeah. and it's whenever they want to drink. Oh, it's nice. It's herbs. Yeah. It's herbs. So he brought this rakia, and he's saying we should see what it is. Surprise. What is this again? I think it's from the flower of Uzo. Having like five rakis in a row, this is nuts. Surprise, surprise, it's actually almonds. We were thinking anise, something similar to that, but yeah. it's almonds. Hey, Cheers. gazor, 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 gazor. Oh, gazor. Gives you wings. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so they brought us some walnuts, some cheese, some olives, some peaches, and some figs. Oh, whatever. Mm. It was huge. Okay, where are going now here? Yeah. Sorry, what's your name, bro? Ardit. Ardit. Here is the place where we make the raki. Traditional raki. So it's like distilling grapes. Why is it different from grappa? What's the so, difference? Because we don't take the juice for making the wine first. It stays go there with the juice and the, with the, the, the grapes, all the grapes. Everything. We don't take the, the juice, that's the difference. We put the grapes here after the fermenting for about uh, seven, eight days. The, the sugar that uh, is in the grape turn to the alcohol and to take the alcohol from that, we put here, making the fire with wood, just wood, we don't use nothing. Because making the fire gas and or... after starting to boil and the gas comes here. here this is with the cold water for consist from the gas to the water and here came the raki. How many kilograms you put inside? 600. 600 in one boil? In one boil and oh, that is that's... 500. This is why I came to Albania for rakia. Cheers. 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 So we have to drink for the welcoming you in our uh, in our winery. Thank you. you. Oh, we're enjoy that. Oh, oh yeah. This guy's the man. <laughs> so this is how the granddad did it. 
basically you drink it I from a pepper. Yeah. yeah. And after you can eat the pepper. And after you eat the pepper? Yeah. What? All the pepper Some or wild stuff. Paper? <laughs> Let's just do it. Oh, well, so you, you just go. All, oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, 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 hey. This is different. Oh, yeah. Cheers. Would you take him sutta? Take him sutta? A picture of my stats? It's a palate cleanser. Kills, kills the heat. We're going now at the cellar of our winery. Amazing. The second we walked in, the owner is just pouring wine straight from these steel tanks. Wow. And what is this? What? It's the same thing? Merlot and Cab? It's Merlot and Cabernet. I'm gonna try it. Wow. Oh, it's still young. You can still smell the fruit. Really young. Yeah. This needs time, right? Six more months? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, because I, I feel it. It's still like citrusy, it's still sour. Needs a little more time. That's awesome though. So this wine is not ready. It still needs six months. Once it's ready, they bottle it. Then they store it for at least three months. These right here have actually been sitting for four months. And the way it works for them is that as people come in, they sell, they put the label on by hand, and it goes out to the customer and they enjoy it whenever they want. Amazing. So it's not mass produced. They have limited bottles. You know, this is this is what it is. This is like the real life. This is the, the, the hardworking hustler here. <laughs> This guy's the man. This is the restaurant. Restaurant. Roshnik restaurant. The restaurant of the village. Literally walking up the hill, you pass the mosque, and here's the restaurant. Beautiful open air garden, terrace, upstairs, all terrace, open air, bottom as well. This is gorgeous, man. Super nice. And this upstairs, beautiful. Right here we have a small terrace. This is like indoor because they have glass, but they also have a little outdoor area. This is just gorgeous. This is like real Albania mountain village in the middle of nowhere. And you find these places, winery, the people. Beautiful, super amazing. Oh man, thank you. Thank you. Right. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you. Anytime. For sure. I'll see you soon. The people here. Phenomenal. Now we're going to the Castle Park, which is our best hotel for Barrett. Okay, so we just passed through Berat. It's sunset, everybody's out, amazing. It's like non-stop people. I haven't seen it this pack before. It was just way too hot, I guess. And right now we're crossing a bridge and people are selling fresh fruits and vegetables. Look at this, wow. Peaches, watermelon, everything. So the hotel we're going to is on the other side of the river. There's three bridges. Two are just pedestrian bridges. The other one you can cross by vehicle. Castle Park. Castle Park? Yeah. Nice? It's very nice. And this is Castle Park Hotel. The entrance looks like a castle. Let's check in. Let's see my room. I'm hungry. We're having dinner right here, right now. Let's go. I was waiting for you all the day. We're, we're getting here. I'm sorry. How are you doing? How are you? Very I'm good. Mama, nice to meet you. David, nice to meet you. Thank Pleasure. Thank you very much. Thank you. Pleasure for me. Awesome. So right here is the dining hall. Main dining hall. You have like 20 different tables. I love this. This is amazing. Really nice. This is the... Uh, uh, yes. Uh, what's his name? Skanderbeg. Skanderbeg. Uh, helmet is like yeah. this, right? Yeah. Yeah. Really nice. So we're gonna eat good food, drink good rakia. Yes. Good rakia, good wine. We have prepared something. Not something. Every food in Berat, we will pre present it to them all. Yeah? Okay, yes. Okay. I am the president of slow food here in Berat. They prepared for me some peach, some plum, many juices. This one's peach. Dude, it's like pure. Like there's there's no added anything here. I told you it's fresh. Alright, let's go see my room. Second floor, right? Great. This place is great. The staff, the best. Dude, I love it. I love it. So tell me. It's like it's like an old style, it's like exactly. a castle. That is how it's supposed to be. 
So it's like a room in a castle, very old school, cozy. Yeah. Got a king size bed here. Yeah. Over here we have a twin size bed. So if you have kids, sleep right there. And over here we have the bathroom. Over here we have more modern. Really nice. The day, toilet, shower, love this. Really nice, right? Huge mirror. And then over here, we also have a terrace that overlooks the terrace, like the outside seating, right? I love the fire, bro. This is great. Are we gonna cook some kebabs there? Yeah. Yeah? There's no kebabs. I'm messing with you. Yeah. <laughs> Look at this monstrous feast. This is barat food. Berat. 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 Alma, what do we have? So, Berat is famous for the good food. Okay. Because it has the best olives, so the best oil of olive. Okay. The best cheese, the meat. We buy all the meat in the villages in Tomori, Holy Mount. Okay. So, today we have done uh, Turkish chicken with Pershesh. We have done the lamb with seven kinds of uh, herbs. Burek with herbs with tomatoes. We have this pilit is with mice of uh, flour and the uh, seven kind of wild garbage in the top. Stuffed eggplant, yaprak, it's rice with uh, leaves of grape. Uh, the cheese is very important and very good in Berat. We have a lot of other things but uh, they are other coming things. from More the things. kitchen. Oh mm -hmm. my god. And we have yes. Rakia? Raki. Raki is from Fana. It's a wild fruit. Okay. And with some chafran. Okay, guys, we have a huge feast here. This is Albanian food from Berat. Looks incredible. We have a huge mix, like 12 different things. Wine, other wine, rakia, and the big bread. Yes, yeah. and <laughs> the homemade bread, kulac. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> this is kulac. So we start with the rakia and the wine? Yeah. And we go backwards. <laughs> gazoar. Gazoar, gazoar. Welcome in Albania. Thank you. Mm. Oh, that was nice. So smooth. Your mouth is on fire now, I think. No? Now it is. <laughs> now it feels good. Okay. <laughs> it warms you up in this heat. Yeah. <laughs> we do bulgur. Bulgur? Yes, it's uh, lacrore with uh, corn. And in the top is uh, corn again with milk, peppers, nuts, cheese, uh, oil of olives, and that's all. And uh, we use this before when the Albanian people was were poor. Okay, so she went through a big process of making the bulgur dish. She adds one layer, a second layer. It's like never ending, like three layers. Then after that, we come over here to the fire, el forno, you know, the oven. She heats up the tava, the biggest tava I've ever seen. This is huge. She heats it up to, I don't even know what degree. She picks it up, covers this, and then it cooks. Whew, I am baking. Amazing, amazing. Thank you, thank you. But where's the food? <laughs> now she's gonna prepare the berati beef, which is basically a schnitzel. Schnitzel is the best. She pounds the beef, she fills it with cheese, then breads it. Oh, so good, so good. I love this. Hungarian and Serbian, they all do it. They love it. So what we're doing is we're gonna try a few things, and the rest of that is going out to people who need it. Yeah. We're not throwing anything away. Exactly. So let's start. Oh well, let's let's uh, yeah. Gazor. 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 Finally, you remember. In this video, yeah. I think we we drank how many? <laughs> <laughs> it's fine. You know, I've been running it like I'm running on steams right now. This is uh, we call this uh, medicine for the heart. So we need some. Yeah. 
this is the and best. people are using this for hands so we are using yeah. it for heart so yeah it's good <laughs> that's good we are smart <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's got the best eggplant right here oh wow look at this let's do it bro i'm eating like this whole thing <laughs> yes let's do it mm. eggplant stuffed onions red pepper mmm nice oil So next up, let's try this. Yeah, Prag. So basically, grape leaves stuffed with rice. Okay, <laughs> let's do this thing. Mmm. So tasty. And here we have cheese. Mm -mm. That's butter? That's butter? <laughs> My god, dude. I thought it was cheese. <laughs> I just dived on. Yeah. It's the best butter of all time. You, you, you drink it like we sometimes drink Raki instead of water, you know? And <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it was so good. Yeah, okay. Wow, I didn't even, oh, I didn't so even know that. But this is not butter, right? This is cheese? Yeah, no, no. This is cheese. It's not cheese. It's a cheese, but... It's, it's not even the cheese. It's like sour cream or... It's the best mix right there. It's like sour cream, yogurt, yeah, and cheese. Yeah, yeah. It's like everything. Yeah. There's yeah, like a there. problem there. Uh, you have experience, man. <laughs> mm. So stop pepper. This food is crazy good. Yeah, I'm right. Let's try some fig <laughs> salad. This is so crazy. Look at this. Mm. The ultimate. The figs. Yeah, figs, yeah. And what's this guy? He got salad. Uh, he just said, there's no high books. Uh, he just a gentleman with books. Mmm. Mm hmm. Yeah, just cover salad. Wow. Wow, it's like the best cocktail of, uh, of salad. My turn, guys. Oh, yes. This is so delicious. Got rice. What else you have in here? A little bit of cheese, some minced meat. Next up is the cheese right here. Crazy cheese, look at this. Oh my God. This is so good. Yo it's not butter. In fact, it's yogurt sauce. Okay, okay. It's different. It's insane. It's like red pepper, olive oil, yeah. olives, a little sour. It's it so sour. good. Yeah. It's just so hot, like just out of there. You, you have know? to wait, bro. Ah. You wait for so long, shooting some nice photos. Mm. You can't wait two minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Tomato and um, onion, right here. Yeah. So we have to talk about this. Burak is uh, very famous in Albania, so we usually have it in the morning, mm -hmm. so it can replace breakfast. Let's try this turkey. Yeah. Like this is amazing. Cheers, Cheers. This is way better than what I have for Thanksgiving, man. It's crazy. Yeah, you cheese. We have no words what to say. It's so delicious, really. We have to try the lamb. Crazy lamb. Got fat. You have meat. Oh, snap. This is gonna be good. Yeah. I love our little huts. Cheers. This is ridiculous. I was looking. Ridiculous. Wow. <laughs> so good. Mm. Gazor, gazor. Gazor, gazor. Thank you. Thank you. All right, so here is dessert. It's called Katma. <laughs> yeah, Katma. And what is it? It's like a baklava? It's similar, but Not tasty. Good. More tasty. <laughs> Albania, everything's more tasty. Yeah, more tasty every time we try. <laughs> so this is made a lot faster than baklava, and it's delicious. Wow. Okay, we are ending our night. We have rakia. We have two different desserts. It's like ice cream with a few different textures inside, and then they also have, I guess, like some syrup. A raspberry, uh, marmalade? Cherry. 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 Cherry, marmalade, cherry? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Crazy. Herat is famous for his cherry. 
Yes. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, guys, so we had an incredible experience at the winery in which town is that? It's a Roshnik, uh, Roshnik village. Roshnik village. It's like yeah. 25, uh, 25 minutes away yeah, from Berat. Yeah, exactly. Okay. And this area is known for their wines, incredible wines, some of the best wines in all of Albania, also olives. So, olive oil, olives, the best. Yeah. What was the name of the winery? Alpeda Winery. Alpeda Winery. Sorry guys, it's it's complex with the names. They have so many good winery they have so many good wines, but the rakia was like non-stop. Like non-stop. We tried like five rakias. Uh it was exactly seven. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> yeah. Seven rakias. Seven rakias. Plus yeah. like three here. So, <laughs> so ten rakias. Ten rakias today. And then we came back here to Castle Hotel in yeah. Berat. So and we had a feast. So we saw a process how to make two different dishes. Yeah, yeah. We tried rakia, we tried wine. Yeah. And the music. And the and music, the music yeah. exactly. Yeah. We're gonna do it, we're gonna do it, we're gonna do it. Yeah. yeah. If you like this video, David give us a thumbs here up. And Mamir the ball head. <laughs> give us... <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, ciao, ciao. Ciao, ciao. <laughs>
So she just pulled it up and you can see it's starting to form the butter. It takes another like five, 10 minutes. So I think that's good. All right, my friends, let's dive on this food. What a feast. He's back, he's back. Yeah. Or John. You How awake? are you? Yeah, of course. Yeah. It's a good um, sunrise. Yeah, yeah it's amazing. Yeah. Overlooking the mountain here, so beautiful. And here, my friend, we have homemade butter. Very this is crazy. This is a feast. Right here, we have delicious eggs with like some herbs. We got fresh butter. We have hard-boiled eggs. We have fermingues. We have glico, petola, petola right here. And this over here is what? What is this one? Love. After we do butter, we take butter and we have the this. The rest is love. It's yogurt with Whoa. butter. But in our family, it's super fresh. So differently, we call it Albanian Red Bull. So it gives you power. She just poured this from where she made the butter. She took out the butter and all the excess, all that like super liquidy yogurt, basically, is what the tal tal love. Lalo. Lalo. It's hard to say. <laughs> Some eggs. Delicious. The most delicious thing you can have for breakfast in Albania. So lots of eggs for breakfast here. Shake one cheese there. This place is famous for their olives. Bera is the like the number one producer of olives in all of Albania. And here we have the petula. So get like two petulas. So let's get some butter right here. Put it right there. Wow. Look at this, the butter literally is melting on the bread. Mmm. Oh wow. The bread's fluffy, has corn. Mmm. So here we have the same butter. Just obviously they made it earlier. I'm not a huge butter guy, but that was probably the best butter I've ever had in my life. Like straight up. That was so good. Now I'm gonna have some of these eggs. These eggs are great, man. With some herbs. Delicious. Some onion. Mm-hmm. Mm. Red pepper, green pepper. They love red and green pepper, right? That's like yeah. the biggest thing here. Mm-hmm. This for guests has scrambled eggs, cheese, red and green pepper. Mm. What makes it so good is that fresh goat cheese. Like so fresh. And over here I have a bunch of jams, right? So I'm just gonna try this one. I don't even know what this is right now. What is this one? No idea, right? Super soft dough. I love the golden texture around it. Mmm, and this is quince marmalade. This one's a cherry one. Nuts glico, which is so special. This takes uh, 60 days to prepare, you know? The difference between glico and marmalade is what basically this is still the whole like fruit yeah that's not they take the nuts put in the water they need to change for around 30 days every day the water so the nuts will lose uh, you know because it's still not yet uh, ready to eat it mm. super delicious like gummy bear you know it's like a gummy gummy yeah. sensation Oh, it's like the like straight up syrup here. Mm. And over here we have fig glico. It's a really big fig. It's got a bite into it. It's like a mouthful of fig. It explodes in your mouth with this like delicious, I guess it's, I mean the water is almost like a syrup, like honey, you know? Super like thick, but at the same time, not so thick as honey. I don't even know what else to eat. It is so much. Come to Castle Park, sleep here at night. When you wake up, you can have this feast and you can watch how they make the butter. The petula as well. I mean, the petula, it's very easy. And then right here, finish it off with some fermingues. Mmm, one last bite. Huge breakfast. Rakia. Rakia. Yeah, guys, we're not drinking rakia this morning, just water. Wow, the birds, the weather. Nice and cool. Hello, buddy. Are you ready for Elbasan? I'm ready. Okay, let's go. So we have a one hour drive to Elbasan. Yeah, around one hour. Perfect. Then we're gonna see so, a castle. Yeah.
So David, this town is so famous for having a refinery of oil, of diesel. So in this town, they should be very rich people. But unfortunately, they are not because all are private uh, now. But as you can see, this guy, so he's checking how many liters of uh, of diesel of oil he has in on uh, on his uh, water on his tanks you know wow. yeah and what's the name of the town uh, this town is called Kuchova Kuchova Kuch. yeah so uh, you can see all around there are a lot of uh, refineries producing fuel so yeah so there's a lot of oil refineries here and this is only like a 10 minute drive from Beira going on the way to Albasan still around 45 50 minutes from Albasan but over here to the right you see tons of oil refineries so we stopped here to see this machine pulling out the oil as you can see it's extracting the oil and then it sends it down a pipe I guess the tanks like the ones we saw before yeah, yeah. similar scenario and I guess the reason why this town isn't extremely rich is because this is all privatized now you were saying yeah, right privatized. Wow. let's go bro We've been driving for half an hour and we see tons of hills, lots of farmers, people, you know, goat herders, turkey herders, uh, got olive groves, I mean, beautiful hills. Over here, we just made a right to Alasan, and then over here to the left, you can go to Belch to go to, to where we went yesterday yeah, exactly. to see the lake, right? But if you keep going straight, in about 30 minutes, we're almost there, yeah. Alasan, and yeah, another beautiful hot day in Albania. So we stopped here to save a tortoise, small guy, right? Oh man, there's one right here. So every time you see the tortoises, if you see them in the road, just stop, get them, move them, leave them. That's it, that's the best thing to do because if not, they're gonna get hit. I literally had to stop like four cars because this guy almost got killed. Oh, let's go. Okay guys, so we made it to Albasan and right in front of us, we have the castle. The castle, the castle of Albasan. So we are going to explore the castle inside. That's uh, the main attraction of El Basani. And uh, El Basan means a conquered city. So this castle was built when uh, it was conquered by Ottomans. And this is El Basan. Huge cities. Uh, we said second largest? Uh, no, it's the fourth largest. Fourth largest city? Okay. So walking through here, as you can see, we have a park over here. We have lots of cafes, restaurants, supermarkets and the castle is right there. And this is the center center of town, right? Yeah. And these are the walls of the castle built in the 15th century by the Ottomans. A short castle, I mean, it's only like 30, 40 feet high. Lots of towers, obviously. Towers here, tower there, so many towers. It actually reminds me of the walls of the city of Lugo. Lugo in beautiful Galicia, Spain. Very similar style. That was actually built by Romans. This one's not. This was built by the Ottomans, 15th century. And then the entrance is right over here. So we're gonna go in the castle, we're gonna walk around, we're gonna explore, and then we're gonna exit through the other way. This place dates back to Roman time. When the Romans arrived here, they first built Via Ignatia, which was 1,120 kilometers long. Starting from uh, Rome, Italy, from Duras, which was called Durazzo, all the way to Macedonia, Bulgaria, and uh, Istanbul today. So we are going to see a part of that road, but you will see a mixture of Roman time and Ottoman time. So similar to Bera, this is a living castle, meaning people still live inside, people are born here every day. But unfortunately, that's not a UNESCO, so people uh, can rebuild their style, the houses. So you can see some are very new, some are very old. Yeah, so this is like more modern, you know, some old stone buildings, but most of them are rebuilt. Yeah in like the 1990s, 80s, 70s. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it looks very, very different. Lots of different colors. Typical architecture during the 1950s. So this uh, wood is to protect the building, the wall, in case of earthquake. So this will balance the wall. You can see it's not straight, but it goes like... We are now in front of King's Mosque, which was, which is the uh, first mosque that was built in Elbasan after they conquered uh, Elbasan, Ottomans they built this mosque dates from 1492 so this is renovated of course so always uh, when people go and pray uh, left side is for females and right side is for males or vice versa and inside when they go to pray the second floor is for females so you know the practice of uh, muslims so they have to wash their hands in front of the mosque so that was the mosque and right across from it we have a church apostolic church of elbasan so you can see the sign there and this is via ignata yeah exactly here was like uh, the entrance 
all the way to Istanbul. So it, this was a kind of a border in Elbasan. So to, to go through Istanbul, uh, to go all the way to, all the way to Istanbul, you have to cross this, uh, let's say, border because it was you have to go inside the castle, cross the castle, then you can continue your way all the way uh, to Istanbul, which was 1,120 kilometers, about 700 miles long. I've actually been to a few of these. Like in Sofia, they have it. Yeah. You can see it. Yeah, there are uh, some parts like where, where you can still see the, the original stones. They are polygonal. So next we are going to see uh, this beautiful restaurant. But we are not going to sit just to have a look. Scampi restaurant. Scampi was the, is the old name of Elbasan. So Scampi was called during the Roman time. And we are going to see uh, they are keeping and saving some uh, pottery from the past, some statues. This is a gorgeous restaurant here along the walls. So you see that's the exit, right? So you yeah. exit the entire castle there. Over here we have the walls and we have many different places to eat. So you can eat up here in this terrace. You can eat inside in the garden area. And they have another terrace over here. Beautiful spot. So once you come down the staircase next to the exit, under the building, you can see Roman ruins. This is the old Roman city. And it's like walls, right? That's walls to different houses, I'm guessing. It could be anything, really, but it's different walls. The good thing is the entrance is for free. So at, uh, when you enter into, inside the castle, you can have a coffee, you can see the, the history, which is under, under the walls of the restaurant, and the beautiful garden. So this garden usually used for, to arrange some private uh, celebration. And that's it, guys. We explore the castle. There's the exit. My man, we can't go up, right? Yeah, it's closed, but that's it. I mean beautiful living castle See the mosque see the church see the street and then come to this restaurant have a coffee have breakfast have lunch But every time you're here just come here for sure because this is beautiful look at this I've never seen a restaurant inside a castle like this. So now all the way to Pogradets a long drive so it's one and uh, 20 minutes probably so the only way to get to Borodets, which is on Lake Ord is to drive from Berat through Albasani. There's no other way to get there from Bera. So if you come from Tirana, you pass through here as well. You pass right through here and keep going. So we have about an hour before we get to Lake Ord. And if you guys don't know, Lake Ord is a lake that is bordered by both Albania and North Macedonia. On the other side, you have Ord and Struga, which are the two towns. Ord is a beautiful town. It's like 365 churches from Byzantine period. Really amazing spot. And then on this side, we have Povradets. And that's basically it for the lake. It's the deepest the lake. This lake in, in the Balkan. It's about the average depth is about 300 meters, and uh, is it? It is considered the oldest lake in Europe, so millions of years because it's a natural. And uh, what is special is uh, one of ten uh, cities and uh, natural sites that is inscribed in UNESCO, right? So as a city and as a natural site, so as a lake and as a city of Ovrid, but not from Albanian part, but from a Macedonian side, North Macedonian side. So in a few moments we'll uh, see the first town, small town Libraj. And uh, as you can see the nature here is so beautiful, we have also a lot of parks, natural parks, all up in the mountain. So, but cannot wait to show you Ohrid Lake or Pogradets Lake, so it depends how you want to call it. So it's important is the same and it's so beautiful. So we just climbed up like a huge hill and once we went over it, there you can see Lake Ord. Beautiful dude. It's so blue. It's so ridiculous. It's like a sea. Yeah. And the other side, also like on the other side of uh, Albania, I went to a monastery over there. Yeah, amazing. Saint Neo Monastery. Saint Neo Monastery. In fact, it was part of Albania, but uh, to it was given as a gift by our king in, during 1930s to Macedonia, to like uh, as a sign of uh, of relationship, good relationship they had at that time. So Saint Neo Monastery nowadays is uh, one of the most important sites for Mas North Macedonia. All right, we're gonna stop here and yeah. check out the view. So in front of uh, us we can see the Lin village which was the favorite village for our former leader of communist time Enver Hoxha. So he has his uh, private residence there and for that reason it still nowadays looks so beautiful from here. So now we're going through this village. Yes. And oh. yeah, so the village of Lin is uh, if you see any Albanian movies 
most probably the village of Lin will be inside the movie because most of them are recorded here in this part of Pogradeci. Pogradeci has a lot of beautiful villages, Lin, Tushemish, Drilon will go later in the park. So, And this is the village of Lin, as you can see, beautiful small village right here on Lake Ored. It is gorgeous, the view right here, just look at this, blue crystal clear water. If you want to, if you make it here for lunch, go to any of these restaurants, right? So they're all restaurants like on piers on the water. So you can literally eat, drink, whatever, right there, overlooking the entire lake. Over there is North Macedonia, and that's it, right? Yeah, so if you plan to go Pogradets, uh, immediately when you come up in the in the hill, you'll see a very beautiful village from the top of the road, and uh, that's Lin. So before going to Pogradets, 10 minutes from Pogradets is this beautiful village with the crystal water, as David said. And that's it for the village, guys. Now let's go to Pogradets. Pogradets, our final stop. That's the village life for you. Cows everywhere. Cows everywhere. Literally walking yeah. through the center of the village. Village life. <laughs> so how far is it? 10 minutes? Uh, 15 minutes. 15 minutes, okay. And so Pogradets is the main town on Lake Ord for Albania. Yeah, Pogradets is the main town, so it's it's the only city that uh, we can use the lake to, for swimming, like uh, like the seaside. So many people prefer Pogradets because the water is not salty and it's so fresh. And I thought the north of Albania was beautiful. This is like stunning, dude. Stunning. Right? Stunning. The yeah. blue with the mountains. It literally looks like the sky is in the, in the lake, you know? It's crazy. And this is Pogradets, the only city in Albania on Lake Ored. It looks amazing. We have like five hours to explore. We're gonna eat a lot of fish. We're gonna walk around a town. We might go on a boat. I mean, so many things to do here. And I hope you loved this video. We started off this morning in Berat at Castle Park Hotel. We had an awesome breakfast. We saw they make the donuts and we saw they made butter, which was really, really cool. Authentic, traditional, uh, just a process. I've never seen that in my life. The food was absolutely incredible. And then from there we drove one hour to Albasan. We saw the castle, we walked around, we saw the ancient road, a mosque. I mean, basically that's what you do there. And then we saw this village. village. Beautiful village, right on the water. Incredible views, stunning lake. This is Lake Ored, guys, in Albania. I hope you love this video. If you did, give me a thumbs up. Leave me a comment below, subscribe my channel for more awesome travel content. I'll see you in the next travel food adventure in Pogradets, Albania. Peace. Hey, check it. Put the place up. What's up everyone, this is David Hoffman from David's Bin here coming at you from beautiful Pogradets in Albania, right on the waters of Lake Ored. Check this out. Crystal clear blue water lake, deepest lake in the Balkans. It actually borders North Macedonia. On the other side you have Ored town. Over here we have Pogradets and this is the beach. Beautiful white sand beach. And the reason why a lot of Albanians prefer to come over here, over the seaside, like the water in the Adriatic Sea, is because that's salty, it's fresh, they love this. This place is great. Check this out. People are relaxing, it's summertime, it's packed. And what you can do here is you can explore the town, you can go in the water, and you have to try the Koron fish. Koron is a type of fish that lives at 300 meters deep, right? And that's what this town is famous for. So we're going to the Change restaurant. We're gonna see how they prepare the food. We're gonna eat, we're gonna explore the town. Are you guys ready? Hungry? Very hungry. Let's go. <laughs> here in the town next to the beach, we have the boardwalk. Right? Yeah. So people just walk here, go on their bicycles. There's actually a park in the middle. So between the beach and the street is a park. And over there, like on the street, you have all the restaurants. They're all lined up. There's like 50 restaurants. It's never ending restaurants. Never ending restaurants. And we're going to the, the change. The change. The change. So what makes Pogadex, Pogadex special is the, the lake has sand, so it's a sandy beach which is so difficult to find in other, for example, in another side where is Ohrid. If you go to Or town, it's beautiful, but they don't have a beach like this. They don't have a huge white sand beach with umbrellas. I mean, it's just not that style over there. It's more about the 365 churches, you know, every, every day they have a church. Yeah. yeah, so as, a, as a, you know about Albania, so all Albania was conquered by Ottomans, so also Pogradets was a part of it, and all you, have, all you know about the tourism in Pogradets was from Evliya Celebi, a Turkish Ottoman traveler. So he mentioned about Pogradets that 
uh, Pogadas had red roofs and uh, four neighborhoods, four mosques and 150 shops. So shops, shops still nowadays uh, is a part of main economy in, in Pogadas and most of them they selling fresh fish, souvenirs and uh, everything what they need during the daily life. Uh, Apostolos? Apostolos. Yes. So Apostolos is the owner of the change and I think he's going to make some koran for us. You're welcome. <laughs> the change restaurant is a more modern fish restaurant. As you see, a beautiful terrace, all wood. You come inside, it feels like you're on a, on like a boat, like a Greek boat or something, like a Greek island. Over here we have some boats, lots of wine, never ending amount of wine. Over here we have the kitchen where he's going to make some amazing stuff for us. He's gonna make a few different koran dishes and he's gonna make some salads. This salad's called taco. This is like a Greek salad, but he modernized it a little bit. It's a little different. You have tomatoes, cucumber. Uh, he has this like super hard bread. It's like the Greek style bread. It's so, so hard. It like, it really, it's hard to break through, but it gets really moist when you allow all the oil to get absorbed into the bread. It's really yummy. In the end, feta cheese. What's the best? Morocco and spinach. Now we make one salad, it's with uh, spinach, rucola, it's with pistachio, it's with susam. This is my type of salad, it's like a monster, delicious salad, my god, lots of nuts, lots of berries, raisins, dude, this, this one is amazing, I mean, they both look amazing, but this is like a monster. Eggplant salad. This is the cora. This is a traditional fish here in Poland. It's in the same family with salmon. It's the same color. All right, so we made it here to the table. We have two different salads, actually three different salads. We have like a tzatziki, we have these like fritters, look amazing. We have zucchini fries, and he's gonna do tartar right in front of us. Quran tartar, Quran, Quran tartar. It's like salmon. It's traditional here in Pograd as this. I have, it's in the same family. It's, but it's not very fat, like a salmon. Don't have fat. If you see it here, it doesn't have fat. Like this, over. Here we have mango and avocado. Three simple things, olive oil, orange juice. And this is our feast. It's never ending here. Wow, I think I'm gonna start with number one, right? The star. We just watched they made it. Man, tartar, Koran tartar. He put mayonnaise on the side. You have avocado. You have just a lot of beautiful ingredients. I love the presentation. This guy's like, this guy's the ultimate chef. Really, really cool. So let's try. Amazing. What a beautiful dish. Now let's grab some of this and just put this aside. Let's jump on this tartar. God, it's fresh, it's cold, it's crunchy. Whoa. Mm-hmm. That mayo? It doesn't taste like mayo. It's like the best creamy sauce ever. So I'm gonna get some of the mango. I'm actually gonna mix it because I think it's just way better with the mayo. Wow. This is like the perfect tartare. Mmm. Oh, it's so amazing, it's perfect. Oh. Okay, so we served my plate. We have zucchini fries. They look delicious, let me just try one. Mmm. Wow, nice and mushy, so hot. Mmm, light batter, incredible. Next to it we have this beautiful salad. Wow, a pomegranate on top, I love it. Looks crunchy. Mm -hmm. The berries, the nuts, the arugula. I'm gonna eat this all day long. So fresh. This is definitely a summer salad. Mm. Over here, 
we have a salad that is a Greek salad. So it's a little different because it has this hard bread. So we have the feta, get the hard bread. A little hard, not extremely hard. Usually you'll get it and it's like super hard. This one, I soaked up some of the oils so it's got broken down a little bit. Everything's amazing. Mm. Tzatziki, get that. Always mix it with your fries. Mm -hmm. Right here we have delicious eggplant salad. The best. Mm. So fresh, so mushy. Dude, it's like perfect thing to eat. Everything here matches perfectly with the lake. Nice and refreshing summer dish. Mm. This is feta filo crostas, which is basically similar to baklava, right? So it's filo dough. They wrap cheese inside it, so they wrap it stuffed with cheese, and they fry it, and they put these nuts on top. Yeah, so sesame seeds, another seed. Feta cheese, nice filo dough. It's not too oily either. It's so good. I love this one. Crunchy, sweet. Mm. Everything has been so delicious and we haven't even gone to the fish yet. So, always drink white wine with fish. Especially summer months, right here by the lake. Dude, it's perfect, thank you. And this is the grilled Koran. Look at this, beautiful. He added salt, pepper, some delicious lemon, and wow, just a beautiful fish. So it does remind me a lot of salmon. Thing is, he was saying it's less fatty. Salmon has way more fat. And you know, he cleaned it. So hopefully we don't get any spines. Maybe a few, right? Always, can't really clean it perfectly, but this looks delicious. And he said the skin is super crispy and crunchy and so good. Oh yeah. Mmm. Very similar to salmon. Nice and fresh. Comes directly from the lake. Mm -hmm. I think the best part about this is that it was grilled and then he added some zest to it, some salt, some pepper, gives it some nice crunch. Wow. I, I, I mean, they're both great in terms of tartare and this one. I prefer tartare, easier to eat, no bones. You don't have to go, you know, diving in, trying to see if there's any. And that one had just more refreshing things, summer stuff, right? This is still fantastic though. So we are having same as Queen of England, long time ago. So this was uh, one of her dishes every Friday. She was right, it's very healthy fish, it's amazing. Queen Elizabeth ate this here, and then when she went home, she basically said, every Friday I'm having it. It's my father's right here. Yeah? Okay. Gazor, 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 gazor. Is it strong? It's like a rocky. gives you wings. Where are we going next? Next we're going to Drillon Park, which is one of the most beautiful ones. Very quiet, you'll feel very comfortable there. This is awesome, so we have three of these tables here. Yeah, I forgot what these tables are called. Like soccer, what are they called? It's like soccer, um, man, my, my nephews have this in their house. It's pretty awesome, everybody's here, relaxing. This is like straight up beach life here. No shirts, I have, some of these guys have beers, and the beach is right there. Beautiful. Everybody's relaxing. Yeah, so nice view. So you want to see there? You want to go there? Oh, what is that? Yeah. So that's a place to jump in the, in the lake. So that's a pier and there's a water slide. So all these kids are just jumping in, doing front flips. With the mountains around, everybody's playing cards, relaxing. This is an old school boat. Look at this place. It's gorgeous, dude. What a gorgeous spot. Wow, so many people in the water right now. It is summer. August 12th. So the water slide's open, huh? No, it's not open, it's broken. Oh my God, so dangerous. <laughs> so dangerous. Somebody goes up there, that won't be good. So man, how you doing? Oh, 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 oh,
It's amazing, dude. It's like all these kids just jumping in the water, doing front flips, back flips, diving, cannonballs. This is real summer, man. Yes, yes, yes. Ah. I get the diving. You're gonna diving. It's funny because that takes me straight back to my childhood, you know? It's like going to the beach, jumping off the pier, enjoying life. No worries. No studs, no studs. No worries. Yeah, no worries. Oh wow, it got really hot out there, huh? Yeah. Being out there for like five minutes was like brutal. We used to be in uh, to replace ourselves with them. That's basically the center of Pogradets. Beach, park, restaurants. That's it. Don't come here in winter. If you come here in winter, everything will be closed. There won't be anybody here. It gets really cold here in winter. Yes, it is. Really cold, you know, everything shuts down. The only thing that's open in winter are a few restaurants within hotels and that's it like not anything else and you won't see this you don't experience the people walking around and i mean this is a perfect place to come in the summer with your family come eat some but, fish but if you are so boring of humans you should come to stay all alone so all the lake for yourself <laughs> in winter yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay okay so what's the place we're going to next? How do you say the name? So Drilon Park, Drilon uh, National Park. It's so beautiful with a small river going through it. So there are some boats uh, and we can have a walk in the nature. So beautiful. The spot we're going to is about a five minute drive. Once you pass the main area of the town, you get to another side where there's another beach, right? Super small beach though. It's literally beach on the road. The road, beach, water. That's all. That's all. A few like restaurants over here, a farm over here. I mean, look at that. Oh, they're playing like soccer in the water? Oh no, that's volleyball over there, volleyball. volleyball. Yeah. Here we are. Beautiful, nice stream. Ducks, yeah. pigeons, Drilon. Drilon. It's the same as Macedonia or no? Uh, no, it's uh, Macedonia, it's Drini. This is Drilon. Macedonia is the, has more water. This is still nice, very quiet. People come here to relax and a lot of couples when they do a wedding clip they come here to because it's so beautiful you see many birds and we'll see some boats over there so we can have a ride with a boat so we're gonna get a boat ride it costs 500 lakhs so like roughly five US dollars my man you good <laughs> so this is the stream it's a big circle so we're just going completely around he was saying that on this side, it's like, you know, very wide. On that side, it becomes very thin. And over here, that's a restaurant right there? Yeah, that's a restaurant. There are a few restaurants, in fact, but this one is the, has the best view because uh, you can stay next to the, there are some balconies on the water and you can feed uh, the birds, the ducks, everything that is here. So they come all next to you. It's very nice and the boat, as you, as you mentioned, is only $5, which is very small amount, so you can explore, you can have a different day from, uh, from uh, Pogradets, so you can swim at Pogradets, then come here afternoon for a relax. So nice, peaceful, relaxing. All right, guys, the captain told me to take the wheel. Uh, a monster. On the other side. Yeah, yeah. I'm like running into the wall. I always do one side stronger than the other for some reason. There's too many things. There's, <laughs> the stream got very thin now. Carefully, mind your head behind. Mind your head. Okay, now. Wow. This is amazing. There's all the restaurants, right? Restaurants all over there. Over here, we just have, I don't know, some props right there. So we did a full circle. We're about to go under the bridge. Beautiful bridge, love all the flowers. You're doing it, bro. Yeah, I'm uh, riding the boat. So if you want to, you can actually take the boat yourself, like they're doing over there. They went without a captain, but I think the captain's better. Friend, thank you, thank you. Lovely, but You're the best. That was good. It was only like 15 minutes. Yeah, 15 minutes. Nice, you know, slow pace, relaxing. So peaceful, I love the oxygen here, the yeah, air. It's much different. Yeah, it smells different, feels different. And that is our day here in Pogradets, Lake Ored. This place is so beautiful. The best time to come is the summer to experience the beach, the boardwalk, people enjoying their time, 
and you have to go eat at The Change, the best restaurant in Pogodets. Well, obviously we only visited one, but this one was phenomenal. Delicious Koran. We had tartar, we had grilled, we had just two, three salads, fantastic food. My favorite thing for sure is the tartare. Yeah, Blew me away. Me, for me, same. It was it was great. It was good. Yeah. And then we came here, only a five minute drive to Drilon. Yeah, exactly. And then five you minutes. come, you pay you know 500 lek, take the boat ride. Also, if you're hungry when you come, you can have lunch or dinner right here at many of these restaurants. This one looks amazing right there on the water. Beautiful terrace. And guys, if you love this video, please give us a thumbs up. Leave us a comment below, subscribe to my channel for more awesome travel content. I'll see you in the next travel food adventure in Albania. Peace.